Bonjour, one million cups, Fargo. I think it's been a while. So, so I'm going to say bonjour, and you say bonjour back to me. Bonjour. Bonjour, one million cups, Fargo. Uh, bonjour, everyone. My name is Alexandre Cusa. I'm fortunate to have a guest of honor that are re re responding to my, uh, to my greeting in a, an exotic language named French. So welcome, everyone, to One Million Cups Fargo. Let me start, because hospitality is very important for us here at uh, Emerging Prairie. Who is new in the room? Who is new? All of you should raise your hand. Who is new? Yes, give them a round of applause, please, please. Uh, so now that we have the new people, who is not so new? Who is not so new? One time, ten times, so many times, can't count times. Yes, new people, clap for them. Clap, clap, clap. Yay, welcome to you, yes. So, not so new people, if you haven't told the new people why we gather here every week around amazing coffee from one, I was going to say from one million cups, from 20 below, let me tell you. So, every week we gather here around this amazing platform in downtown Fargo to uh, visit, connect, and uh, listen to uh, local, regional, and national entrepreneurs. And it's a very good platform as well to gauge the pulse of the area, what's happening in the area, and as well to be more connected. As you know, they say that opportunity dances with those already on the dance floor. And I think that really One Million Cups is those dance floor where you get to interact with those opportunities, but as well to strengthen uh, hopefully your network. You come here as a maybe quite shy, not as connected person and leave here, oh my God, I'm ready to take on Red River Valley, come to me. So that's one of the things, not so new people, be friendly, wave at someone, smile, hey, what's your name, are you new? I haven't seen you before. The coffee's pretty good, coffee pretty good is a good opener, you know, the coffee's pretty good, oh, you don't drink coffee, maybe there's tea. But with that in mind, so excited to see new faces. I, 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 one of the things that is amazing is seeing when there was the opening music, usually people just walk in and you know, just take a seat. They were jamming, weren't you? Like, you, you like the... So please, like, let's, next time when you hear that music, please jam, because that's Emerging Prayer. We take pride in having that opening music. But with that said, I'm going to give it to the one and only, my brother slash twin, sometimes people mistaken us, Greg Tavin. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Alex. Well, hey, welcome, everyone. Today's a fantastic, very special day. It is Annie Capital Day. We are going to hear from two fantastic uh, entrepreneurs, one out of Grand Forks, uh, one a Clara Barton Elementary School graduate. Yes, now living in Montana. She's back to give, uh, give an update on her work. Uh, we are joined statewide through our friends at Click Content Studio. They're an organization that supports uh, digital media. They're broadcasting live across the state uh, through the forum communication channels. I know our friend Kelvin Hollett at the Bank of North Dakota is listening, so big thanks that we're getting to share this uh, day across the state. Uh, what happens at One Million Cups is we're going to start with a series of announcements, opportunities to get you involved in the community. Then we're going to hear from two entrepreneurs, two folks that are going to share who they are, what problems they're solving. And then we as a community can answer questions or ask questions for them on how can we improve their business? How can we help them think about blind spots, opportunities, ways to grow faster? And then we're going to send you home because uh, you got work to do and jobs to, jobs to, to lead. So uh, to kick things off with the announcements, uh, I want to uh, welcome the ladies that I believe the YWCA just recognized is one, part of their Women of the Year campaign, uh, Laura and Danielle, to give us an update on the Lady Boss Summit. Let's welcome, it uh, looks like it's Laura here today. Welcome, YWCA Woman of the Year winner extraordinaire. Thanks, Greg. I am Laura Caroon, and I'm a co-founder of Lady Boss FM, and I wanted to invite you all to come spend a morning with us at the beautiful Pines venue on Thursday, June 6th for our second annual Lady Boss Summit. Um, we have some really amazing speakers this year. We have Dr. Ann Blackhurst, president of MSUM. We have Ruth Buffalo, uh, representative for District 27. Dr. Jacqueline Bussey, author, Concordia professor, and theologian. Dana DelVal from the Arts Partnership. We have Randy Kay from Naturally uh, Randy Kay. We have Ashley Morkin of Unglued. We have Dr. Faith and Jerry from the Offit School of Business, and Danielle and I will be there as well. So come join us. Uh, we would love to see you. Tomorrow is the very last day to register, so um, get registered. I don't have the link up there, but it's ladybossfm.com, and you can find all the information. Thanks. Well, thank you, Laura and Danielle, for your leadership. Uh, up next, our friends from West Fargo are here for an upcoming event. Welcome, Ellen.
All right, so I'm actually going to talk about two of our upcoming events that are kind of helping um, support our new developing downtown area. The first is our West Fargo Cruise Night is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year, so we're really excited about that. Um, that happens on the third Thursday of every summer month, and it really brings thousands of people to the downtown West Fargo area to celebrate classic cars, but also delicious food and kind of our community. The second one is the first ever West Fargo Street Fair, which is a unique um, opportunity for our local artists and crafters and um, businesses to really just celebrate themselves on Cheyenne Street. We had an overwhelming amount of applications, so we're really excited to really just fill our downtown area with those talented people and also delicious food and fun for the whole family. Um, you can find out more information about all of our events at City of West Fargo on social media. Thank you. All right, thank you. Ellen, up next uh, from the North Dakota, South Dakota Border Sales Tac Workshop, let's welcome Daryl. Welcome, Daryl. The Border Sales Tac Workshop. Yeah. I've been just wondering about the Border Sales Tac for years. Yeah, it's kind of hard to excite people about uh, sales tax, but that's what we're here for. Actually, it's, it's not to excite you, but it's to get you informed. If you do business in both North Dakota and South Dakota, we have a, a, a workshop that's going to help you out, make sure that you understand the differences. If you're just starting to get work in South Dakota, it's a good idea to understand that there are differences. Um, and basically what I think, as far as who should attend, if you do retail sales in North Dakota and South Dakota, you should be there to find out the differences, what's taxable, what's not. If you're a contractor, there are definitely differences in South Dakota and North Dakota as far as if you're doing contract work there. And surprisingly enough, South Dakota taxes some professional services, like if you're an accounting firm, and if you do work in South Dakota, they expect you to collect sales tax on that. So there are things that are different. So anyway, that's our website. You can go there and, and register. There's no charge for it, but you should register because sometimes they do fill up. But anyway, so sorry it's not exciting, but it might be important to your business. <laughs> all right, for all your sales tax needs. All right, up next, our friend. How many of you have attended TEDx Fargo? A couple years ago, we had Kevin Wang, the founder of Teals, an organization out of Microsoft that is helping folks learn computer science skills, which is fantastic speak. Uh, they brought that program to North Dakota. Join me in welcoming from their team, Nancy. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here today. Uh, my name is Nancy Malin. I am with Microsoft Teals, and Teals is Technology, Education, and Literacy in Schools. So we want to bring computer science to the schools, but right now we know that there's a severe lack of uh, uh, computer science educated teachers. So what we try to do at Teals is we fit computer science tech professionals out there in the industry with high school teachers and try to build a, and grow a sustainable computer science education program in our schools. We're actually in West Fargo High School, Cheyenne High School, a lot of other schools around here. If I keep talking about all the schools, then I won't get to the end to make sure that you know our website is tealsk12.org. Um, you can fill out an application to be a volunteer um, at that website. You can also just get a ton of information. So I'm looking for people who um, want to harness their CS knowledge and, and work with the schools and, and help build our, our, our CS professionals coming out of schools um, in North Dakota. Um, we've been in North Dakota for a long time. How many people have actually heard of Teals? A few people, good. Okay, great. Um, but uh, that's not enough. We need more. So that's what I'm here for. And uh, give me a contact uh, if you want more information, anything like that. I'm here. All right. Well, thank you, Nancy. All right, up next. Uh, from the Emerging Prairie team, we got Drone Focus next week. Let's welcome to the stage Brian Carroll, who's like all over the media because of Grand Farm, but he's going to talk about Drone Focus. Welcome, Shanley High School graduate, couldn't get into Clara Barton, Brian Carroll. But I tried. <laughs> so I want to make a special invitation to our Million Cups audience to Drone Focus next week on Wednesday, May 29th. If you use that code right there, you get $50 off. What Drone Focus is, is a step into North Dakota, going into a fully autonomous nation. And what we're going to see is we're going to see industry experts, we're going to see entrepreneurs, researchers, all working together. And this is a great way to connect, but also understand how this is going to impact us and how we can take advantage of these opportunities. So I hope to see you guys all there. Thank you. 
Thank you, Brian. Also, next week, we will not have One Million Cups. So there is no One Million Cups next Wednesday because we're going to be going uh, to be part of Drone Focus. Uh, so one of the things that we believe at Emerging Prairie and in our community is that entrepreneurs drive our economy, but our artists drive our culture. We like to practice something, for those of you that are new, called Random Acts of uh, Art. So today, uh, from Miss Cheryl Bombinger's uh, third grade class from Clara Barton Elementary School, uh, we've got a special round of act of art for you. So come on up here, bring the energy, bring the fun. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all. Did you guys have fun?
How was it? Yeah, it was good. All right. Well, we'd love to have you back next year if you don't graduate third grade, okay? Okay, so today is Annie Capital Day. What's going to happen is we're going to have an opportunity to hear from two uh, organizations that are founded by folks that are kind of in the Annie Capital ecosystem. Annie Capital is an organization uh, that is a funding source for female-led uh, businesses uh, so they can grow and scale. So two of the organizations that they are involved with, hang out with, spend time with, are here today. Uh, so if you guys could take these mics too. Uh, so our first presenter uh, is a Clara Barton graduate. Isn't that exciting? She also uh, got her, uh, her undergraduate degree at MSUM. She's got two master's degrees. Uh, she currently lives in Montana, and she's one of the t uh, founders of Story Squares. Uh, join me in welcoming to the stage Clara Barton graduate Jennifer Sheets. <laughs> Thank you. Do we have a clicker? OK. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Claire Barton. That was amazing. And as an educator, can we please give the teacher a round of applause for bringing art into the classroom? Thank you so much. That's awesome. So my name is Jenny Sheets. I am the CEO and co-founder of Story Squares. But before I tell you about what we do and how we are going to revolutionize the way we write and communicate, let's start at the beginning. So Story Squares is based in Montana, but I grew up in Fargo. That's me on the right, with those killer boots. I grew up in a creative family where I dreamed of being an actor or a famous writer. I never wanted to own my own business. In college, I studied philosophy and writing. I loved the way that words could craft a fantastical novel or empower somebody to stand up for justice or offer a hopeful message to someone in need. In addition to writing, my other passion is education. I've mentored and volunteered and taught in the schools from kindergarten to college for over 15 years, and I've seen how much kids struggle with writing. They can talk, tell stories, articulate their ideas in speech, but there seems to be a major disconnect when it comes to putting that into writing. Well, turns out, three out of four students in the US cannot write proficiently at their grade level. That means they do not meet the basic writing standards to advance to the next grade. But in most cases, they do, and they fall way behind. Those students then enter into the workforce. 80% of Fortune 400 companies cite writing as their, company, their employee's greatest weakness. These are employees in your businesses, costing you time and money because of poor communication skills. I wanted to do something about it, and one day it clicked. As I watched students fly through technology with intuitive ease, I wondered if technology could save writing. Well, somebody told me that making an app was easy, and I foolishly believed them, so Story Squares was born. Story Squares is a web-based uh, platform that offers customizable writing templates that walk users through their writing from beginning to end. And OK, I get it. A writing app is not as exciting as virtual reality or Instagram, but hear me out. How many of you write something longer than a tweet once a month? Once a week? A lot. And I'll bet many of you could benefit from a little writing help. So here's how it works. Working inside the template, this is the linear view. It's designed as if you were mapping out your ideas with sticky notes. Imagine starting a template for how to write a cover letter. Each square corresponds to a different step, such as how to write a greeting, what to include in your first paragraph, and so on. Users can add squares to the template and place them on the storyline. Squares then can be moved around freely as you organize your thoughts. Squares are enlarged for further writing and template support, such as the definition of a cover letter or the definition of a thesis statement. All the text is then auto-populated into a full doc for easy to edit and easy to share viewing. Changes made in linear view and full doc view are saved, so you can move back and forth as you work. Our layout is simple, but we believe our design is revolutionary. I want to argue that writing education has been too focused on spelling and grammar and too little on organization and logic. We have spelling and grammar APIs online, but student scores aren't changing. And programs like Word and Google Docs are just digital pieces of paper forcing users to work from top to bottom, limiting creative freedom. Story Squares offers a bird's eye view of whatever you are writing so you can focus on the big picture. So who are we? 
Well, myself, with a background in writing and education, my partner Walter, our principal designer, and two outstanding advisors with successful businesses in the tech industry. We've also made some great partnerships with organizations, including two universities, where we've had students developing our app for free, and we just hired one of those student developers to continue on, so our first employee. So what's next? We're continuing to bootstrap so we can stay focused on our vision and our customers. We're on the slow and steady pace, but so far it seems to be working. For our first niche market, we wanted to target a segment of education we could help the most and access relatively easily. So we're starting with high school students writing college application essays. We're using inbound marketing to target the parents of high schoolers as they begin their college application process. And from there, we have plenty of space to grow. We've had interest from law firms, hospitals, nonprofits, business accelerators, and large companies wanting to streamline communication. Short term, we start beta testing next week, and we hope to go to market in June. Our long-term plan ex um, includes exploring integration opportunities with uh, programs like Salesforce and HubSpot and college prep software such as the Princeton Review. We're also working on using AI for computer-assessed writing. We know that writing can be hard, but it's a critical skill for communicating with confidence, whether that's a mystery novel or a One Million Cups presentation. Everyone deserves the chance to be a better writer because at Story Squares, we believe everyone has a story to tell. They just need the tools to tell it. Thank you. Hi, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right, so if you have questions, you can tweet them in now uh, with the hashtag 1MCFAR, uh, or uh, we'll be uh, going live questions after we hear from our second speaker. Uh, so our second speaker today is, uh, is Sierra. She's a serial entrepreneur. She was homeschooled, but she grew up skating in the ice rink near Clara Barton. Is, have you been to that ice skating rink? It's good, right? Uh, so that's where she got her start. Uh, she also went to Minnesota State University, Moorhead. She's a serial entrepreneur. She's living in Grand Forks, but she's here today. Join me in welcoming to the stage uh, the founder of Boutique Box, Sierra. Welcome to the stage. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Well, it's exciting to look around the audience and see Margie. Do you remember me? <laughs> Crazy girl. Um, yeah, it's just fun to see different people from different parts of my journey. I grew up in Fargo, North Dakota, um, moved up to Grand Forks about five, six years ago, and have just been on a small business journey since I was very young, and so it's fun to see different people from different parts of that journey here today. All right. So, Boutique Box. Um, like I said, I was born and raised in Fargo, North Dakota. I um, started Boutique Box about a year ago, and I'm really excited to visit with you today, not only about the concept itself, but also being a female founder and what that looks like, um, especially in North Dakota. So about a year and a half ago, I found myself sitting on a cold concrete floor in the back of my retail space. I was surrounded by boxes of unsold inventory, dusty files, awards that I had created for employees that I never had the chance to give out. And I thought to myself, it was really interesting sitting there that day because I had been in that exact same spot 10 years prior. Only that time, the boxes were full of inventory ready to be put on the floor, lots of hopes and dreams, and excitement going into opening my first concept. As I sat there alone that day, I sobbed. I'm a third generation entrepreneur. Um, like I mentioned, born and raised in Fargo, and I've been around small business my entire life, so it doesn't seem odd to me at all to be a small business owner. Um, I started my first business when I was 14. It's actually the acting company here in Fargo. And so when something doesn't turn out and a vision doesn't turn out the way that I had planned, it makes me ask, why? What's next? So we just um, got back from a trip to Orlando, actually, and as you guys know, if you travel to Orlando at all, as far as the eye can see, the landscape is dotted with roller coasters. I'm actually not a fan, so I went because my 13 and 15 year old at the time thought it would be a great idea. Um, I don't know if it's the topsy-turvy part of it, if it's not knowing the end from the beginning, the dark tunnel when you can barely see your hand in front of your face, but I refuse to ride them. So I find it rather ironic that I've chosen a life career of the craziest roller coaster of all, being an entrepreneur. What does the story that I told a minute ago have to do with Boutique Box? Well, I really believe it has everything to do with it. So 
to me, business is business, right? We have a customer, we have a product, we try to sell our product to the customer, we package it differently, we market it differently, there's different pieces to it, um, every, bo every business looks a bit different, but at the end of the day, business is business. And so I can only reflect back at my past journey and see how I can bring that into my next concept. I think that entrepreneurs that are successful take both the highs and the lows of their roller coaster, and that's what creates the best business that they have possible. So after I dried my tears um, and started to really reflect on what the last 10 years had been for, I could only wonder why I had made the connections, why I had the industry experience, what could I do with that? Um, and as I started to think about that, I thought about the problem that I really saw in the boutique industry itself. So when I had started 10 years earlier, there was no Facebook. Um, now there's Facebook boutique only, right? There's boutiques all over the US, and the way that they're going to market is very differently than they did and how they bought when I first started. Um, vendors are really struggling getting their product into boutiques or in front of boutique buyers. And so I thought, what if I could match up these two sources? What if I could bring that boutique buyer together with that vendor? Everyone understands the subscription box model, but no one was using it in the wholesale space. And so I thought, what if I could bring that subscription box model to a boutique owner in a wholesale capacity? What if I could place full samples in front of a qualified buyer and bring these two industries together? So um, as I started to look at um, what made sense and what I did right in the past and what I did wrong, bringing those two pieces together, I really thought about um, what worked well and how I could create the best solution possible, um, bringing what I had done well and what I had not done well into the boutique business space. So first of all, the power of relationships, both on the micro and the um, macro level. So on the micro level, when we first put together our um, our example of a boutique box and what that would look like, we found boutique owners around the US and put together a pilot group so that they could receive a box, give us feedback, we could change, grow, rinse, <laughs> rinse, wash, repeat, and continue to do that as we tweaked our concept. On the macro level, when I started Boutique Box, I had zero customers, not a single one. And so really reached out and looked for influencers in the indi boutique industry that had a large following that we could send a box to, they could promote and market it for us, um, obviously, they had the customers we wanted, and we had a new and up-and-coming product that they could pr promote and it could benefit them. Knowing my business this time around, um, knowing that I would be in it and doing everything on my own for a very long time, I had to figure out how I could best manage my time, how I could outsource the different things that are projects that I needed done to experts in their fields, and then knowing my num numbers. Um, I think most importantly to this part of my small business journey is knowing the end and having the end in mind when I started. So um, I knew that I wanted to build a concept, grow it, and sell it in a very short period of time. And so every single decision, whether we added something to the program, took it away, changed it, tweaked it, it was always put through that filter of will this make it more attractive for a future buyer um, and will it add value to the company that we're working through. So I'm really excited to say that in um, under a year, we're now shipping to 41 of the 50 states, um, and we're working with some prospective buyers on buying into the boutique box concept and taking it um, to an ev even bigger level than it is today. I'm really excited to chat with you guys and do some questions and answers with Jenny. Thank you. Yeah, why don't you sit here? You go in one of those and I'll sit here. Yep, there you go. And Jenny, can we bring you back to the stage? So now we have an opportunity to ask questions. So what this looks like is you can tweet in your questions with the hashtag 1MCFAR, uh, or you can just raise your hand. And we've got Malachi as a mic runner and Darby, so you could just track them down. Uh, so, so to kick things off, uh, Jenny, maybe first to you, what's it like to come back to Fargo? Uh, last night there was a founders gathering and you were there. And I, wh what's it like um, for you as somebody that grew up here uh, to be back here. What's your experience been coming back to Fargo maybe as, a, as an adult? It's been extraordinary. So I moved in probably around 03, 04, um, and Fargo has changed so much in 15 years. Um, and to come back, I feel like you can just feel the buzz of entrepreneurial energy here. Um, I felt so supported last night and coming to this, I've gotten so many emails about who can we network you with? Who can we talk to? What are you doing? We're so excited to learn. So just coming back to this community has been unbelievable. So now I hope this is the first of many to, to get to network again. So thank you. 
And then, Sierra, you, you hinted at the roller coaster. Yes. But you didn't bring us into the roller coaster. <laughs> so we've got young people here. We've got established folks. Maybe tell us about what, what is it like on the turn when you're pivoting, when you're adjusting, when you're moving cities. Help us understand the range of emotion that you've gone through as you've built multiple businesses. Yeah, I mean, I think we all see those quotes on Pinterest, right, of the squiggly line. Um, and they talk about, like, in one day, you can be like, oh, my goodness, this is the best business ever. I have so much business. I'm making so much money. Oh, my goodness, what on earth am I doing? I can't pay my bills. But, you know, <laughs> like that whole thing, it's like riding a roller coaster and it goes so fast. Um, I think always knowing that there is an end is really important. And then knowing th your vision for where you want to go is important, too. Um, I didn't talk about this at all, but surrounding yourself with really good people, which is probably the power of a relationship on the mentor side, is huge. Because if you can sit down with someone, like if Jenny and I were to go to coffee, she would say stuff, and I'd be like, oh my goodness, yes, me too, or vice versa. And so it's really important to connect with people and not try to do just your small business journey all by yourself, because you really feel alone and scared. Excellent. All right, let's go to the crowd. Looks like we've got one right here. Hi, uh, I'm Nicole from Rising Tide Software. Thank you both for being here, and thank you for sharing your stories. Sierra, I don't know anything about clothes. I'm basically just dressed not to be naked, so I don't have any questions for you. Dressed not to be naked. <laughs> I can it. identify. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Jenny, I yeah. am in a similar situation as you in that I'm, I am helping, I am not the developer, but I'm working with a team of developers on a software product that has never been made before. It's a, it's a new concept, and um, it's, I've, it's scary because um, my, in my experience, you don't generally want to be the first. Mm -hmm. You know, that's like the first person in a market. Typically, it doesn't go awesome, and then the second and third and well, fourth don't people. Tell me that. No, 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 I'm <laughs> getting to. I'm getting. I'm getting there because I'm in the same boat as you. It, it, it typically, but not always, right? Is the, the the first person doesn't it doesn't know how to address that market need as well as the people that learn from whoever went in first. Mm -hmm. So my question to you is, what kind of market validation have you done, given that this is a whole new thing, which I love and I think it's brilliant? Yeah, so that's a great question. So I kind of see, I feel like there's two questions in there, the market validation and how am I going to prepare for the storm that's coming. Um, <laughs> so market validation, we have, t so we first started in the schools. We were preparing to sell to classroom schools and districts. Um, and we had people just banging on our door, wanting, wanting this immediately. So um, we have been contacted, I think, by six states, um, not at the state level, but schools within those six states that want this. That was really validating. But we realized, I mean, of course, you know, very late that just entering into the school system and trying to sell into schools is really challenging. So I wanted to f figure out another way that I could still get students to use this, but maybe through a different, va um, different avenue. So. Um, other market validation, we've been running some ads and gotten, we've gotten so many beta testers signing up for this in different industries. Um, so I mean, I think we've done our validation and we, we hear constantly that people need this and want this. Um, as far as then moving forward being the first, um, I know everybody's been warning me, you know, like I should not be showing these, you know, these screens in the public and, you know, don't tell anybody what, about what you're doing. But at the end of the day, I could keep fighting that and I could be scared that it's going to be really hard, I'm going to get crushed. I mean, Google could pick this up, they could design something, you know, tomorrow. It could be launching and I could be dead. So what, you know, I mean, I guess then I'll just start another business, right? So, easier said than done. That's, I'm totally saying that with a smile, but I'm gonna, it's horrible, but. <laughs> you know, so, um, I don't know, being the first is also exciting because no one can tell me that I'm wrong. So that's kind of fun. Um, and we'll just see what happens. And that's why another reason we're not bringing on investors and we're not, we're staying very small and slow is so that we can respond to our customers' needs um, as efficiently as possible. So we're kind of launching this first version knowing that we're gonna completely scrap it and start over um, for V2, just kind of expecting that, that we're gonna evolve with our customers. So I don't know if that kind of answers your question, but yeah, thank you. All right, looks like we're going up to the, t uh, up to the top and then down. Hi, uh, thank you so much. Um, it's, it's so great to hear from two amazing young women. Uh, Sierra, I'm wondering if there's a play for you to work with your vendors on um, some philanthropic efforts in um, providing products to nonprofits. Yeah, that would be really interesting. Um, 
that's one of the pieces in the relationship side. So because I've been around small business, I love telling the stories of other small business owners. And the vendors that we've chosen to go in the box have been very small and unique up and coming brands, um, partially because they're more interested in working with someone small like me. Um, and so it's a little bit easier for us to enter, but then also just helping them market and build. And um, we have chosen some brands that do a lot of give back. We work with one um, where a portion of their product all goes to building wells in Haiti um, and creating water, piece, um, water opportunities for the people of Haiti there. Um, so it would be interesting. That's something that I should think about more, um, just taking that to another level and working with nonprofits on, in some capacity to help increase awareness, either for their nonprofit or um, a revenue stream. All right, so this, uh, we're going to go to a question from Twitter, but uh, before all of you got here, I was talking to some entrepreneurs from Clara Barton Elementary School, and they've got businesses and slime. Some of you are selling <laughs> slime, right? We got some book Ooh. sales. We got bath bombs. Uh, these are entrepreneurial-minded uh, young people. They're part of the business class that, or business program they've got. Uh, but I'm curious. This question comes to us from Alexander, and I think it's relevant for our friends from Clara Barton. How did you go, go about growing your business? How, how did you think about putting money into the business to allow it to grow? I know the slime sales are really strong right mm -hmm. now, um, but mm -hmm. we're running out of product. So how, how might you grow a slime business, but how have you grown your businesses as well? Ooh, that's a good question. Well, you might have to address the slime since that's <laughs> more of like a product. But <laughs> um, for me, it has been just day by day. I'm flying on that roller coaster. I. Um, to be completely honest, have no idea how I'm gonna grow each new day. I'm like, okay, well, we're still here. Everybody's still alive. We still have our one employee. Okay, everybody's good. Um, so I think, th again, the, it, surrounding yourself with amazing people, and I've been able to talk to my advisors about when is the right time to start our ads. So we just launched an ad campaign. You know, when is the time then to put money into this employee? When is the you know, next time for this? Um, We've raised um, a little bit of money through competitions and some school programs. So, so far that's been sustaining us. Uh, the next step of growth, I'm stubborn. I want to see this get off, the, get off the ground on my own. And so we're hoping to put um, our first revenue, just keep putting that back into the company until we can't anymore. And I think that that day will come where we'll, we'll know either we can sustain or we're going to have to ask for funding. Sierra, how have, uh, I mean, you've done brick and mortar, now yep. doing more of a digital strategy or a dis different distribution model, but how, yeah. how have you, um, how has finances played a role in your growth? You know, I think I constantly have to remind myself of this, but it's really taking care of the customers that you have. And that's really hard for an entrepreneur because we have goals. So I want to be at 150 boxes. I want to be at 250 boxes. And so sometimes I lose sight of, I mean, I have women that are still getting a box. They were my very first customer. That's pretty cool, right? So they've stuck with me through a whole year of crazy changes. And, you know, the box looks different. What's in the box looks different. And they've stuck with me. So paying attention to them. Um, and really servicing them well, because they're that repeat customer that I don't have to acquire again, and I don't have to pay for again. How can I increase their love of their membership so that they're spending more money with us? So that's what I try to do and remind myself of. I don't always do a very good job because a lot of times I'm always, you know, I'm looking too far ahead to be thankful and realize where I'm at. But that's my intellectual strategy. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go up to the top and then we'll come over here, so. All right, Jenny, I think you may have actually answered my question already. My question was going to be, as a small business owner, how do you go about protecting your great innovative idea and protecting your intellectual property? And it sounds like you're kind of just going for it. You guys know it all now. <laughs> I, <laughs> how did you know when it was time to go then, if I rephrase that? I mean, how did you know, like, all right, this idea is great. We're going to go for it. That's a what? good question. Um, so I started, really, somebody did just tell me, oh, just build an app. And I started on paper. Um, and I started m wireframing it out, mapping it all out, and showing people. And I was so nervous. And I think this comes with, you know, a lot of business owners, but especially female founders, of, I don't think this is a good idea. I don't know if I should do it. But I realized that the more I showed this idea, everybody was, it was very validating. And I, I moved beyond my, my parents who are here, um, you know, who said, oh, yeah, sure, you should try it. And I thought, well, of course they're going to say that. So I moved beyond that. And the more validation I got, I thought, well, maybe there is something here. So that's where I, I started in the schools because I thought, okay, they need this tool. They need a writing tool. How can we help them? Um, and it just kind of snowballed. And I, I kept thinking in my head, I was following my gut of if at any point I feel like this is a waste of time, I'll stop. And so far, 
we've gotten a lot of encouragement to keep going. So it just kind of snowballed. I don't think there was a day that I was like, I'm going to start a business. But I was like, oh my gosh, all of a sudden I've got people behind me, people who want this. Wait a second, what happened? So it just kind of just kept going. All right, let's, uh, let's come to Mr. Olson. Uh, Michael Olson with Michael J. Olson Communications. <laughs> clever, clever name. In that. That's it. This question is for Jenny. Oh, no. I know this guy. Uh, Sheets, <laughs> is it? Um, so how does, uh, how does this, are you kind of living in the moment with this thing, or how does it fit into your long-term goals? You've wanted to be a writer. You're still writing, and, and wonderfully, by the way. Thank you. And now you've got this gig going, but you've still got something up here, don't you, as far as long-term goals, and how does that fit in? Mm -hmm. uh, how does this business fit in? And then as a side note, there's still a blanket fort in my living room <laughs> that you need to come over and tear down so we can use the I used the to have sleepovers so. with his daughter, so we would always build huge forts. Sorry, I'll clean that up one of these years. <laughs> um, uh, that's a good question. So kind of going back to this other question of how it all started, I went to a conference in Montana called Hatch, um, where it's a big innovation summit of tech leaders and creative geniuses and people doing amazing things. And I learned from all of them as they spoke that they all had two, three, four, five, six things going on at once. And I really, I saw a pattern and a theme and I realized how happy they were having a diverse profile of ventures and things that excited them. So. I'm realizing I think that that will always be me. So I want to keep writing. I love to write. Um, I want to run this business. Um, I also want to help startups. I think that I'm always going to be doing a lot of things at once. And so ideally, this would be full time. I want to run this business so badly. I don't want to, you know, this different, different goals, right? Like I'd love Sierra to respond to this too because you knew I want to build this to sell. And for me, I want to I see it get off the ground and I want to see it in classrooms so badly and then I'll let you know. I'll get you, I'll get you back on part two, okay? <laughs> All right, we're gonna go over here, but Malachi, I think some of the students have questions, so if you wanna get in there, let's get some really hard questions. Um, all right, up top. Yeah, this is Mrs. Olson, Jenny, your ninth grade drama teacher. Where are you? Way over here. Oh, Mrs. Olson, <laughs> hi. So I wanna ask you and uh, also Sierra this question about having been your drama teacher and knowing how creative you were in that particular field, how the, the, your activity in creative pursuits as a young person have factored in to uh, your entrepreneurial spirit, and how does, it, how does it serve you now? Huge, I think about this all the time. Being on stage gave me so much confidence to just run with it. Um, students, this is for you. If you guys can take theater and be really comfortable speaking, you can fake your way through anything. <laughs> Including okay. tests in <laughs> school. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> How many of you are taking theater this summer? Some of you are going to do theater, right? I know some of you are going yeah. to Thailand this summer, Minneapolis, Las Vegas. We're all going to travel with you guys all summer, yeah. okay? Yeah, going on a Claire Barton tour. All right, how about for you, Sierra? How about high school, college, elementary experiences, uh, those ages? How did your creative pursuits there influence where you are today? Yeah, I think what I've noticed, probably just in the reflection over the last couple of years in particular, is that it's okay to only be good at some things and to own that. And so, like, I d had the acting company, and everyone was always like, oh, you know, you love drama, you love performing. No, I liked creating. I liked putting the production together and selling tickets. But I didn't realize that when I was Interesting. A We'd love to have you at Emerging Prairie. <laughs> um, we have a lot of tickets to sell, but okay, keep going. Yes, that's what I loved. I didn't love the acting. I didn't want to memorize lines. Too much detail, right? And I didn't realize that then. When I had mode, the same thing. Like, what I loved doing was having a concept, an idea, creating it into a concept, making it happen, and then I'm done. And I didn't realize that until I got through that piece of it. So with Boutique Box, it was really cool at this age and stage in life to be like, you know what? I don't want to manage the pieces of it. I don't want to direct a huge team of employees and whatever. I want to create something that works and sell it. That's what I'm good at. So I think that's all kind of a journey, but you have to keep reflecting. And then you have to have those people who are strong enough to speak into your life and be like, hey, Sierra, you probably shouldn't manage the details. Not really your thing. <laughs> All right, we've got some of the hardest oh, questions no. we could find. Uh, so, uh, do we have some questions over here? And can you say your name? My name is Skyler. 
My name is Skyler. I love to play video games. And yes. I love math. I usually sketch and write a lot at home. Awesome. Um, I can't even watch one of you two or whatever, or the <laughs> person that does the business. Yep. But here's a thought that you could do that you could use, why don't you put in school ma math books, school supplies, oh. and other things for school that you could use? Why don't you put that in? Oh, so in why don't you put box? school stuff in your boxes, Ooh. like slime? Like slime. <laughs> you have a new market over here. That's awesome. <laughs> I think that's the cool thing about owning your own business is you're constantly thinking, why don't I? And so I love that at this age, you're already thinking about that. Why don't you do this? Because when you can constantly think about those things and then write them down and try them, some of them will work, some of them won't work. Like that could be the greatest, best thing ever. Who knows? Maybe I'll get to my 250 boxes if I put school supplies in them. I mean, when I was in school, we got those little flimsy pieces of paper selling us books and then you had to wait. Imagine if they just sent the books to us and then we just kept them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and if you want some um, market, I just found out a stat. Parents are spending on average, get ready parents, $800 a year on school supplies. Oh my goodness. So Kay. there you go. It's there. Wheels are turning. Thank you. No, no <laughs> more kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, uh, we are coming to the end. So uh, every week at One Million Cups, we ask, how can our community help us? So there's over 130 people here live. There's probably six of my relatives watching on live stream. <laughs> um, sounds like some of your teachers might be as well. Uh, but what can we do to support you? First for you, Jenny, you're back in town for a little bit. How can we support this idea, support your customers, your team, your financial needs? Um, how can we really help you and your team reach their full potential? Thank you for the opportunity to ask. Um, I would say two things. One. If you please, go to storiesquares.net, sign up to be a beta tester. We're offering our free version right now uh, for the next couple weeks, and we need testers with feedback. Um, so Claire Barton, maybe I can bring it over in the classroom. We you got one it? sign oh, up. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Don't go online without your parents' permission. Uh, and second... Steal their <laughs> cell phones. It'll be fine. Second, I am so honored to be back in Fargo, and I would love to keep networking. Um, we are still looking for a CTO, uh, tech co-founder. So if you know anyone, um, and also college admissions, schools, just anybody in this field that you think would be interested, I would love a connection. Thank you so much. All right. And then, Sierra, I think you hinted, but didn't say very boldly, there's some exciting growth coming. Are you comfortable sharing any of the growth velocity that's coming, or do you want me sure. to skip well, that Sure, well, the roller coaster. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we've been working, like I said, my goal has been to build it and sell it, and so we've been working with two groups, one in, out in LA on the vendor, I mean, obviously LA is the epicenter for fashion side of it, and then in Oklahoma City, working with a group that's very tech-focused, they've actually taken another subscription box model, have founded that and grown it, and so they're coming on board, and we're working on some really cool stuff this summer um, with the goal of getting that all the story told and launched and rebranded August 1st. So yeah. fun times, we'll pay attention. Yes. But what can we do to support you and the team at Boutique Box to reach your full potential? Yeah, you know, really um, the social media side of it. So, I mean, a lot of you guys, Instagram is where we live. That's where the boutiques live. Um, it's the BTQ B-O-X um, is our handle. If you can like my posts and share them, win for the day, right? I put so much thought into like what picture of product and whatever. Um, and I know all of you, I mean, you probably don't own boutiques, but I'm sure you know ladies who do or who want to, people all around the country. If you could like and share our Instagram stories and posts, that would actually be huge for us. So that'd be great. Uh, ladies, thanks for being here. Thanks for spending time with us. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Sierra. So we're going to send you off stage. Uh, I, and then before we wrap up, I just want to invite uh, Cody up. Cody is the founder of Annie Capital. And I just, um, oftentimes those that support entrepreneurs that are founders don't get as much attention. Um, so, so Cody, help us understand why. Why do you care about finding financial resources for female-led businesses and growing them, most specifically in North Dakota? 
Yeah, so I think the number one reason is that we just invest in the power of women. Um, the narrative around female founders needs to change, and there's a tremendous amount of opportunity for that to change, and so we think anywhere else in the world is never going to do this as well as we can in North Dakota, and you just heard two women with really deep North Dakota roots who are doing some pretty imaginative, interesting, building successful companies, and so um, for us, as a venture capital fund, that's how we de-risk our portfolio, is by betting on women. Women are more capital efficient, they're much more realistic about their growth potential, um, they multitask more than the average person, especially as a female founder, and so um, we just believe that this should be the place where talented women can do whatever they want, and how do we support them through that with both giving them exposure, but also from the financial resources standpoint. Uh, well, thank you, Cody, for being here. Thanks for championing this lady. Let's give Cody a round of applause. Okay, so as we wrap up, a couple things we want to do. We want to celebrate Roger. Thanks for being here. Thanks to Alex Cusa to be our host. Thanks to Malachi and Darby for uh, being our greeters, uh, for, for welcoming us, doing the technology, Danny in the booth, the mic runners. Big thanks for those. Uh, we want to thank our financial partners. These are the folks that power us. When we have big crowds like this, they're the ones paying for great coffee. We give them thanks. If you know anyone out of these teams, what would help us is if you send them a text, an email, write them a thank you note. That allows us to keep doing what we're doing. Um, next week, no One Million Cups. We've got the One Million Cup or t uh, Drone Focus Conference going to be unfolding next Wednesday. You get $50 off if you want to sign up. On behalf of our event logistics team, if you do that early, that helps us so we can get your lunch and your coffee and all of that. Um, and in two weeks, we've got a very special One Million Cups coming up. It is, uh, we're partnering with the Chambers of Co or Chamber of Commerce's YAY program, their Youth Entrepreneurship Academy. So we've invited all 50 of their alumni back. And you probably haven't met Ivy yet, but she's the, she's the founder of Bow Wow Ties. She makes bow ties for dogs. This is getting big, so she'll be here. Also, Joanna Lynn, she is helping bridge the musical gap between urban and rural music around the country based here in the region. Uh, these are young entrepreneurs. You're not going to want to miss it. It'll be high energy. Um, and also, just want to celebrate. Um, we've got Marlo here. It is National Solitaire Day. Um, so if you could just play some solitaire, guys, that would be great. Um, also, big exit in the community. Uh, the folks at Sundog, Brent Tyken, past founder, uh, that's or past speaker here at One Million Cups, just sold his company. Uh, another business sold that I'm not allowed to say their names. I think you guys sold recently. Uh, there is movement. There is activity. Uh, resources are being generated. Opportunities are coming to our state. And so, uh, on behalf of our entire community, we want to say thanks to the folks at Claire Barton uh, for bringing your fantastic young people, uh, to Cody and your team at Annie Capital for for supporting female founders, and to you ladies, thanks for pursuing your dreams. Uh, we will see you here back first Wednesday in June. Thank you, and have a great rest of your Wednesday.